Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Sensor here with a video here today. Bring us a brand new After Effects tour on how to create your very own cool, whatever the title is of the video is the theme of today's transition. I don't know how to, I don't know how to, I don't know how to title it yet, but right here, I'm gonna do the completely hard switch to a clip, right? Now I'm gonna switch right here. And that was the transition. So I think it's a pretty freaking dope, flashy, awesome quality transition. I just think it's it's super, super cool. And I haven't really seen it very often besides like the simple slide ones or like the really cool custom ones where they're just like doing like vaults and things like that. But I think this one right here is actually super freaking clean. Hopefully I made it really easy for you guys to follow as well. So if you're new to After Effects, it shouldn't be too difficult. And also if you're into After Effects, 20 minutes or so is not too hard to actually skip through to actually get the idea. I walked through in the beginning of what the timeline actually looks like. So that way people who are really good at After Effects can kind of just switch through that and be like, okay, I got it. I can get going. Thank you, Seso. So, so uh, yeah, with that being said, if you guys are not subscribed already, appreciate sure to do so. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's about it. See ya. All right, homies, so let's go ahead and get this going right here, right now. So prior to even getting into the timeline, I want to show you guys exactly what the timeline looks like. That way you know what to do or how to at least work some idea of what's going to happen throughout the entire video, okay? So it's going to be a short video because I'm not going to go too long. I'm going to actually just show you guys how to do it, give you guys a template and run with your day. So really quickly, I have a transparency grid off. Right now, this is transparent, so the black is actually transparent, just so you guys know, okay? So at zero frames, there's nothing. At five frames, there's a stroke that appears. Okay, then around 20 frames, the stroke changes to a actual fill. And then from 20 frames to around 35 frames, we zoom it into a nice kind of bigger size of a, of a logo here. Then one frame after that, it'll go into this transparency. This is actually transparent, remember, right? This is a transparent logo with a white background. Okay, then a few frames after this, it'll switch to a nice, or around 45 frames, it'll switch to a nice clear screen where you have a background and a fill. That way, this is where the exact transition is gonna happen, right around this frame right that's what you put in obs as well right so right here that background goes away then we have our fill once again only then we zoom that fill in around 55 frames right to a really really big low to kind of just get in your face then the fill goes away it turns to a stroke it's gonna see the stroke right and then the stroke goes away okay so that's the quick rundown that we have an idea of what we're going to do because it's going to be really, really easy and super simple, hopefully. So let's go ahead and get this thing going. So I'm going to go to file, new, and we're going to go to project here. All right. So now that you guys have your new project, we want to click on where it says new composition, just like so. And we're going to set our width and our height to 1920 by 1080. And you want to make sure your frame rate is at 60. That way, when you guys see my timeline, you'll notice it says 1 through 60 for a one through one second ratio of how long it's gonna be. So that's what I have here. And also make sure your duration right here, I have it at one second and 40 milliseconds for some reason. We might be only using one second and we'll go back into this uh, composition or settings right here and make it only one second, or how big ever we ever need it by the way. So right now it's 60 frames, duration at allowed around one second at least, and uh, width and height at 1080 or next one about 1080, Press OK. And uh, just for the record, to make it super clear, once again, the transparency obviously is the checkerboard, but at any moment you see a pure black screen, that's me turning off the toggle transparency mode. So it's still transparent. There's nothing actually, no fills down here actually, right? But if you see, if I turn it off, it will just be a black background. That'll just kind of have us be able to see what's going on in the transparency that way, because we're working with white. So that's why this is going to be black for the record. There's no ever black solid in this entire video, just for the record, okay? So. Okay, but we're gonna take our logo. My logo is in an AI file format. So if you guys do wanna use your logo, make sure you guys have the AI file format of it. That way, of course, when you follow today's video, you're not too lost or whatever, but you can also use text. So that's also in, in, the, uh, in the air. But for me, I'm gonna take my logo AI, drag it inside my composition. Now I'm gonna zoom out by holding Alt and sh uh, using the uh, scroll wheel, right? To kind of zoom out of the canvas really quickly. Then when I do, I'm gonna click on my logo once again, click it right here, click on the anchor point. After I'm finished clicking, I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift. That'll make sure it kind of size it perfectly. And we're gonna size it perfectly right in the middle, just like so. <laughs> and we can make it like around six. I'm actually gonna press S on my actual uh, layer here. This will bring up the scale. So I'm gonna make it around 6%, just like so. That's about the size that I want to have my logo at right here, but you can make it as small or big as you guys wish to. But for me, 6% is pretty good for that scaling right there. So I'm going to click once again on my AI uh, logo, right click on it. We're going to go to create, then we're going to use create shape from vector layer. Just like so when you guys notice, I click on it, it'll actually turn off my AI right here. You see it's turned off because that's what this eyeball is. And it'll make another duplicate of my logo in a shape format. So now you see here, you can click over here in the top over here. It says fill and stroke. I can change my fill color to black to white. That's the color I'm going to be using today's video. And also I'm going to rename this to simply say fill just like so. Right now with this fill layer, I'm going to press control C on my keyboard and then control V on my keyboard to make a duplicate. And with fill number two, we're actually going to rename this and make this stroke. 
So I'm gonna turn off my fill for one second and turn and just kind of hover over stroke just like so, right? So right now I want my fill to be turned off. So we're gonna click on the word fill itself where it says fill option. And when this box uh, comes up, the one right to the left, it says none. You wanna click on that one that one has a red slash through it. Then you press okay. Right now you notice there's no stroke on it as well because you can't actually change it and it, will another, it'll, it won't let you actually change the stroke. So what you have to do is right to the right of it, it says add. Click on this, click on stroke, and then now you'll notice, you can see the stroke option right here is now also white, and this is the uh, points is at two, but I like to just grow, uh, scroll down here where it says stroke option or drop this down, right? Go to stroke one, then you'll notice where it says stroke width. You can click on that and make this 25, just like so. You can also change the color here, but you can also, also change it up here, but for the record, I just wanna show you guys where it is in the actual project file right here, right? So you can't see it because there's no transparency right now, but I, I'll turn it off for a second so you see a black background at least right now, right? That's what the stroke is. So right now, that is perfect. So we want the actual stroke to come in from zero frames to five frames. So right now, immediately, two things you have to notice we're gonna be using a lot, you already use it once, was the scale. So to actually bring up the scale uh, uh, options, it's pressing S on your keyboard. And to bring up the opacity options, it's pressing T on your keyboard. So right now, we're gonna press T on our keyboard. Okay, and then this little uh, button right here, this is the keyframe, right? Little stopwatch, we're gonna click on that. It'll add a keyframe, you'll notice all the time on the timeline itself, you have a little, a little gray or blue keyframe if it's highlighted or not, right? And if you ever wanna add another one, which we're gonna also do at five frames, we're gonna click right here, right in between these arrows, and we're gonna click on this little button right here, it says add or remove keyframe, click on that, and you guys are good to go, right? So now you have two keyframes, one at five frames, and that one at zero. But that one at zero, we want our pass to actually be at uh, 0%. So we're gonna click on 100%, type in zero press enter and you'll notice right now from zero frames and then at five frames at uh, it'll be at 100 percent we have a perfect sort of quick and simple kind of fade in right that's exactly what we want so now that we have that very simple transition there we want to go to it says 20 frames and we want to flip our stroke to actually no longer be there and have our fill come in very very quickly so the way we're going to actually do that is going to be using multiple keyframes okay so at 20 frames we're going to add another keyframe for opacity then one frame behind it, we're also going to add a, yet again another keyframe. So at any moment in time, you want to see exactly where I'm placing keyframes. Right here above the timeline or right, right, right below the composition, you'll see at 19, you see on the keyframe here. Then at 20, I also have a keyframe just in case you guys want to ever reference or understand or whatever, right? So at 19 frames, we're going to make sure that one's at 100. But at 20 frames, we're going to make sure this is now at zero. Zero, enter. So now the stroke will not be there. So zero to five, it'll be there. Right here at 19, it's still 100%. And then boom, immediately it turns off and that's exactly what we want. So now we're gonna turn on our fill and bring in our T for opacity. And we're gonna keyframe our opacity at 20 frames, just like so. Go again, one frame behind it, keyframe it again. And then at this frame, we want this to still be at zero, but at 20 frames, we want this to be at 100. So you'll notice, boom, stroke fades in. At 20 frames, boom, stroke is still on, and then boom, turns off and immediately brings up the fill. That's exactly what we want, and we're also good to go to the next actual step, which is the 35 frames. We're gonna make this uh, fill option here just a little bit bigger, about the size where it's gonna be like, hey, this is where the video is still playing behind it. That's, that's what we're gonna go for. So 35 frames, we're gonna go ahead and just click on the word fill and bring up the scale, which is S on our keyboard, and we're gonna keyframe the uh, scale option at 35 frames. Then of course, we're gonna go back to the 20 frames and keyframe it one more time. So right now, we have the actual scale at 6% still, and at 35, we're gonna just make this a bit bigger. So I'm gonna take this, let's say, mm, I don't wanna go too big, but I want it to also be big enough that there's you can still see a video playing behind it. So I'm gonna say 27% is exactly what I'm gonna have it at. So right now, you'll notice zero frames, five, the show comes in, 20, we flip from the stroke to a fill, then at 20 to 35, it'll actually get a little bit bigger. And now we're gonna go one frame above it and we're gonna actually do the inverted background. So one frame, 36, right? We're gonna take a quick right click on this actual composition, go to new, then go to solid. And we're gonna change our color down here to a nice perfect white. And if for whatever reason, if this is not at 1920 by 1080, make sure you guys do so. Press okay. Now we have a white solid white little background here. We're gonna drag that below the fill. Okay, make sure that's incredibly clear. And we're gonna click on the fill again as well. Press Control C and Control V. That'll make a duplicate of our fill. We have fill number two now, right? So with fill number two, we're gonna change this and change the actual number two, or not number, but I'm gonna change the fill invert, okay? Or just the word invert, let's just go with invert, okay? 
and make sure you drag the invert layer below the fill layer, okay? And you wanna make sure the uh, invert layer is right above your solid white background layer because this will make, it's incredibly clear way to do that because otherwise you're gonna get a little bit lost and it's gonna be a little bit weird. Um, Cause what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this white background and cut out what's ever above it outside of the white background. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing next, okay? So with this, you can scoot up a little bit, okay? We're gonna tr uh, go press T on our keyboard so the opacity for the white background at 36 frames, right? We're gonna click on that, opacity uh, keyframe, one frame behind it, opacity keyframe. Or if you guys do not know, I don't actually have to add a keyframe. If I just change this to zero, boom, it'll add the keyframe for me, by the way, right? So I'm gonna turn on the transparency grid so you can see what's happening, right? So five, stroke comes in, you can't really see it. It flips to a solid. The solid gets a little bit bigger. Then at 36, right here, you'll see the white background, but we wanna make sure you actually toggle the T mat option or track mat option. So right now, you might see, you might not see mode and track mat. You might actually end up seeing something like this, where you have all the motion blur, 3D kind of icon and stuff like that. If you guys wanna quickly just see what I just did, it says toggle switch modes, right? That's what you wanna have. So you wanna have where it says track mat on, right? So on the white solid, <clears throat> you wanna go to where it says track mat where it says none, and you wanna click where it says alpha invert mat, and then layer right above its name, which is right for me, I put invert, click it just like so. <laughs> now when you've done that, you can't notice it just yet because the fill is also still on here. So you wanna make sure you go back to your fill layer, okay? Press T for opacity, turn the opacity keyframe on just like so at 36, one frame below it as well. So at 35, you wanna also have an opacity right there. So at 36 um, or 35, excuse me, it's at 100% the fill itself, then at 36, we drop this to 0%. That way, at the 35 to 36, it switches from being a white solid logo to a nice white inverted um, transparency logo right there, which is pretty freaking perfect. So you can see, once again, zero to five, right? The show comes in, you can, so you can see it, right? Zero to five, show comes in, then at 20 frames, it switches, right? Then we get bigger, just like so. Then we switch from this bigger logo to a inverted logo. And at this inverted logo, we're basically gonna switch them and flip them once again. So at 36, we're good to go. But at th uh, we're gonna go to around 45 frames right here. And we're gonna flip this to actually be a solid white and also a background, okay? So for this, we're actually gonna go ahead and make a new fill, okay? And with this new fill, we're gonna press Control C, Control V on this fill layer. We're gonna call this fill number two. So a fill number two, we're gonna press the opacity for a second. So we're gonna keyframe this just like so, right at the 45 mark, this another copy, fill number two. Okay, at this 45 second mark, and I also wanna take this and delete everything else before it, gone. Make sure you, all the keyframes are gone before that, right? If you ever press U on the keyboard or bring up all the other keyframes, make sure this is pretty much gone. Actually, no, not the scale. You don't actually change the scale keyframes. You want that to be perfect, but the actual other keyframes with the opacity, turn those off because you might run into issues um, when you're rendering off. You'd be like, why is there a random stroke or whatever or something falling? That's probably why. So just make sure not the uh, stroke uh, scale keyframes, but the opacity keyframes are all gone on your new duplicate number two, okay? So with number two, right, we're at 45. Now I wanna go ahead, just go ahead and just take this, right, you'll notice right now nothing's happening, but we, right here at this frame right here, we want this to be, excuse me, you my keyboard for the opacity, right? We want this to be at zero, but one frame above it, so 46. We want this to be at 100%, okay? Then we wanna actually create a new solid. And we're gonna make this solid background a nice kind of darkish blue tone. So I'm gonna say right around here, this hex tone at 222226. Right, press OK, press OK again. This will be a nice kind of like neutral gray back, uh, background. This can be any color you guys wish to, but don't go with anything yellow or like super pink or bright because it might be like, you know, kind of like a flash warning, you know what I mean? So with this new dark film, we wanna make sure it's below uh, number two, just as it is. And I'm gonna bring up the opacity once again. So at 46 frames, right, wanna keyframe the opacity, make sure it's at 100%. But 45 frames, wanna keyframe this and make sure it's at zero. Right, so that way you can still see everything below it, right? Then boom, it switches to the fill on logo and background. So you can see what's happening here, right? Boom, boom. And then we're gonna go to around 50 frames or so. And it's gonna basically stay for four frames, 46, 47, 48, 50, 49, 50. Um, you'll basically have this incredible kind of like, incredible, you know what I meant. Uh, the fill and the background for you to actually switch um, your scenes in OBS and things like that. So when OBS asks, hey, which frame do we switch? You just say 47 or 47 through 50 really, right? So at 50 frames, we want it to just be the white logo itself. So that way we have to go to this dark blue background, solid, press the opacity again. Right, which is you and our keyboard, uh, excuse me, or you and a keyboard to bring up the keyframes, but T to actually bring up just opacity. Okay, so we're gonna keyframe it just like so at the 50 mark. Then at 51, we're gonna go once ahead, right, and then make sure this is at 0%. Boom, right? 
And we also wanna make sure our white fill is no longer actually even there anymore. So we're gonna go this over here. So 40, 50 frames on the white background, turn the opacity on, and then 50 frames right around, or 51 frames, and make sure this is also at zero, right? That way you kind of have no white background either. So we also make sure all the time you're going back and also changing your opacities of the white background as well. So right now, once again, zero to five frames, you have the stroke, right? Then at the 20 frame mark, it changes to a fill. Then that fill gets a little bit bigger, right? Then at 36, it'll be an inverted kind of cutout of the logo. Then it zooms, not zoom in, so you, uh, 45 seconds or uh, 45 frames comes in. 46, it's just the full on actual background where you can switch your scenes. Then at 50, right? Not just yet, but 51, boom, it switches just to the fill once again. So we're gonna take this fill and we're actually gonna make this really, really big. Okay, so we're gonna take this fill right here, this actual fill option, not fill number two, but the original one fill. Uh, or we can do fill number two, actually. Let's do fill number two, right? With fill number two, we're gonna go press S on our keyboard for scale. And we're gonna scale this keyframe just like so at 51, right? Make sure at 50 as well, it's also keyframe at the 27%, right? And we're gonna go to 20, uh, we're gonna go to 55 frames. And we're gonna make this really, really big. So scale, on the 55, we're gonna make it pretty big. I would say around, it's at 100% right now. So I think 100% is a pretty good like ratio for me right here, but your logo AI file might have not been 4K. If it's you know any small or whatever, and there's a vector file, just make sure it's, it's scaled at a pretty big rate. So it's gonna kind of covering the entire scene, right? So, right, 50 comes in, scale, kind of gets bigger at 55, boom. So I'm gonna take this and duplicate fill number two, control C, control V, and this will be fill number three. We're just gonna actually change this to stroke two <clears throat> so with stroke two we obviously actually take uh take off the fill once again on stroke number two so take the fill turn this off boom right then we want to add in a stroke boom and we're going to take this and i think the stroke width we chose was 25 boom add that in there right so at fill that was my phone by the way not yours i'm gonna turn this off for a second Right at 55, we want to go to uh, fill number two. This is why we named them, by the way. So make sure you're naming it with me so that way you guys know what's happening. We're going to fill number two, go press T on our keyboard for opacity. So 55, we're going to make another keyframe just like so. Then 56, we'll make this at zero. Boom. Right? Not eight, zero. Then for stroke number two, we're going to press T on our keyboard for the opacity. 55, we want to have this at one keyframe here at zero. Boom. And then at 56, we want to have this at 100. Boom, right? So you'll notice, right? It goes from boom, uh, full on background, actually change your scene. Then it goes to just the logo itself. It's a transparency right behind this right now. Then it gets a little bit bigger, right? Then the fill goes, turns off, turns to a stroke. And then at one frame, just like so, we're gonna our stroke number two, right? Take the opacity, keyframe it at uh, one, uh, one second, by the way. This is basically, you know, 60 frames, but one second. Then go one second or one frame above one second and take this and put this at zero. Okay, so it's gonna go boom, nice flash, and then just turns off immediately. So what you're gonna have here is kind of like, it's kind of fun, like little idea here. You're pretty much done at this point, but I wanna do a few aesthetic things that'll make it look just a little bit better. So right now, this right here, this zoom in portion right here, so this is basically, I think, fill number two, right? This zoom in portion is a scale, right? So you see your scale keyframes right here only, because before we deleted the opacity for scale, uh, fill number two. So you'll see under your fill number two, you'll see scale, right? That's the 20 second to 35, excuse me, uh, 20 frames to 35 frames. You wanna highlight these key, uh, two key frames under scale. Then you wanna right click one of them, right? Keyframe assistance and use easy ease. Then you wanna take this little uh, graph right here, graph editor, zoom in a little bit, right? That way you can actually see this little uh, loop kind of uh, area here. So you see two keyframes. These will represent the exact two keyframes that you just highlighted, by the way, the 20 frames and 35 frames. So you want to take this one over here on the left-hand side, take this yellow uh, handle, just drag it forward a little bit, just like so, right? Then we'll go back out and you'll see if I just kind of quickly zoom out for a second, it'll kind of say, hey, it's going to be super slow or super fast or super slow, excuse me, in the beginning, but it was super fast at the end. Right, so it's gonna say, hey, a little slow. It's not too slow because it is super, super quick, but that's exactly what, that, what that's mentioning, by the way. But if you also wanna kind of push them both in, sure, but I kind of just push this one forward, so you'll see if I didn't do that. If I go back for a second, you'll see it's still here, but you'll see right, right here, there you go. You see how that's working out for us? Boom. Okay, so you see that kind of like zooms it in. That's exactly what we want. That looks pretty freaking good. Okay, so now with that, I did, I've done that, right? I think the only thing left is to give a little bit of motion blur. So right now, if I kind of play this through, 
you'll see this nice kind of smooth transition right looks pretty good right so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna switch this back to the modes where it actually shows me my motion blur and my like uh how do you call this um the three so i want to click on this right here you see this right this little three circle thing is called the motion blur if i click on the stroke one drag it all the way down it'll highlight every single one before that or after that um that, that's what i exactly want to do i'm just not gonna i'm not gonna do the ai one because ai file does actually not matter at all um i also realized i think the fill here is not at zero percent opacity or is it i think it is what is this the stroke opacity is this at zero? I can't tell. It sh I shouldn't be able to see it, is what I'm trying to say. I think there's something wrong when it comes down to this one, or something's on, and it shouldn't be on. What is on? Or am I tripping? Is this on? Oh, it's that two. You see this at two? You see I can still see a little bit of low. I can't, I don't know if you can tell on your monitor, but right now, right here, it says at two, because I forgot to switch this. This should be at zero not two that's i just made a little mistake there and that's just kind of like you'll notice those like little things we use you should know how to fix them um just by going through and making sure that things are at either zero or 100 percent right so now the beginning is at perfect zero percent opacity perfect so but now you have this motion blur all turned on this will turn on by default if it does not make sure you guys click where it says enable motion blur click on that so what this will do is while this kind of like part where it zooms in a little bit quicker you'll see a little bit of motion blur going on here. And also around here, it'll also have a little bit of motion blur going on here. And it just makes it a little bit more smoother. So if I just play this out really quickly for you, right? It just looks super, super smooth. And it's just like a really fun just idea and just like a really cool transition to actually have. And uh, before you guys end up rendering, so you wanna say, right, one, one second or 61 frames in total is exactly how much is left. So you wanna go one above, that's one second and two milliseconds. So if I just right click on the canvas or over here somewhere and use composition settings, you wanna go to where it says one second and then two, zero, two, boom, you'll basically get a nice cut off. That way you, when you do the actual render, um, render it out and use it on OBS or a video or whatever, you won't actually have any extended um, duration after the transition is finished. So if you were to switch scenes really quickly, it will probably be delayed and really awkward to give you a really weird transition again. So um, you don't want that. So now that you have that, you're pretty much good to render this baby out. So we're gonna go ahead and go up top and where it says composition, go where it says add to render queue, right? And then for me, if you use lossless, I just use format uh, AVI, change my channel to RGB plus alpha. And if you have like a logarith, um, uh, how do you call this, Kodak, you can use the logarith Kodak. However, if you just want to render it out like this, you can, um, but also turn off the audio just like so, and then save it at your direction you guys want to save it at. Um, if you're not going to do that, you're going to use WebM if you have like a, I guess, in a sense, you want a smaller web size format, um, excuse me, smaller render file there you go you want to go to it says composition then you want to go to it says uh add to adobe media encoder queue right open up media encoder this is where you can actually choose the web m format and it also include render alpha as well so if i just open it up for a second you'll see it should pop up after a little bit boom it popped up now you can just see we're going to change this where it says h uh 0.264 we're gonna click on that it'll just bring up this dynamic link stuff i guess it's just of course after effects translating to um reading encoder sometimes it works if i have to do it over again sometimes it doesn't every now once in a while it does end up doing that for media encoder for me but this time it's fine so format like i said before web m you want to click that export audio turn that off you don't really need it right and then where it says method we're gonna go to constraint we're gonna put the bit rate at 75 percent of the way of that bar here include alpha channel, render max uh, quality, press okay, save your format as well for where you're gonna save it at. This will give you another smaller file size, but if you don't have media encoder, you can use, you can use After Effects as well. It just makes it a little bit for, more smaller. It's just a little bit better to either um, transfer or just also when OBS, it might lag if it's too big of a file, but one second shouldn't be too crazy. Um, but yeah, you might've done any other stuff with your background stuff like that, so who knows, right? But right now, that is exactly how you guys render out and you guys are pretty good to go. That is the end of the video here today so i do hope i just i gave it all i got in the sense of like making sure i don't get lost because i know exactly how after effects can be kind of intimidating and such when i was learning it at least i was just like bro damn you know so i know it's a little bit difficult so hopefully i at least explained it as much as i could possibly and like also try not to get kind of jumbled up in my own words while also trying to teach something so um yeah, I know how much you guys love these transitions and I hope for you guys can just use them in your own videos, your own streams, things like that. It can be a really fun kind of like action packed, like, you know, it's a really aggressively fun 
um, transition. I think it's one of those kind of ones that you'll notice this time. But uh, again, if you guys love it, please sure to leave a like on the video. Check out over here. There we over here. I'll put. I'll either make a place if I don't have one already, but a place of other transitions you can use and have fun with and make yourself. But other than that, I love you guys so very much. Now you keep smiling, stay positive, and stay a freaking love you guys. Later, much love. If you're not subscribed yet, you want to subscribe, and uh, that's it.